Hey guys, it's Erica. Uh, you are watching Talk Sex with the Vixen. So this week we are going to be discussing the dirty truth about vulvas, penises, and sex. So I had a lot of feedback of wanting to just kind of know um, some of the myths and incorrect information that people have about the female and male body parts. So we're going to cover that. So I'm going to start with my top 15 uh, about women, top 15 about men, and then we're going to have some sex facts as well. So when we're talking about women, a lot of people refer to the entire area down below as the vagina, and that is just not true. So the vagina is actually only the portion where you insert tampons, penises, anything else that goes up there. Area is actually called a vulva. So it is the vulva, you have your clitoris, you have your urethra, which is where you urinate and female ejaculate from, and then you have your vaginal opening. So it is all not just a vagina. It's actually a vulva. We love our vulva. A very, very, we take good care of her. <laughs> so it's a vulva, not a vagina. Now, the other thing that I love, I, it just, it cracks me up, is people are always so scared that they're going to lose stuff up there. Let me tell you, honeys and gents, the vagina, which is where you insert stuff, is just a big cul-de-sac. So whether you have Kegel balls in there, a tampon, you have lost a condom up there, <laughs> you have a toy that's gone up there and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't feel it anymore, I lost it. Guess what, it's cul-de-sac, what goes up must come down. So eventually you're getting it back. That may mean you have to dig around a little bit, have your partner <laughs> dig around, or eventually go to a doctor's office to have it removed, but it will come out. So it's not like your back door where it sucks stuff in. This is okay. It wants to release it. It wants to get it out. So eventually you will get it out. It's not lost. No worries. You're not going to have some Kegel balls floating around in your uterus. I promise. So, um, cul-de-sac, what goes up must come down. Now, the other thing that drives me nuts is when people say, well, my vagina, my vulva, does not smell like a package of Skittles. That's okay, it's not supposed to. Our, our vaginal area, our vulvas are not supposed to smell like rainbows and know, starbursts. Doesn't work that way. Every female has their own odor and taste and those are completely different. So for those of you who are running out to go get that Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works stuff to make your vulva smell like cotton linen, <laughs> Stop! You're throwing off your pH balance and it's just not supposed to be that way. So unless you have a foul smell or something bad that is coming out, um, that is when you should see your doctor. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's just something off with your balance that needs to be corrected with some type of um, antibiotic. So pretty much anything we do to our vaginas, our vulva area, can be corrected. So that's why we want to try to keep is, you know, not smelly stuff down there because it will start to throw everything off. So if your vagina does not smell like a bouquet of roses, that's okay. That's normal. That's a good thing. Now, the other thing that people talk about is that they get worried about discharge, certain discharge that um, vaginas will let out. That again is normal. <laughs> you, it's going to come out. It has to. That is the bad bacteria leaving your body. So vaginas actually are self-cleaning and they have good and bad bacteria. And so when that bad bacteria leaves, that's okay. We actually release almost an entire tablespoon of discharge a day just to get that stuff out of our body. So if some people have less, some people have more, that is okay. And that is normal. So you don't have to worry about wearing panty liners every day. You don't have to, I mean, it's normal. It's totally what is supposed to be happening. Um, another thing that people talk about that drives me nuts is, oh my God, I have a lot of sex or my boyfriend or my partner is really huge. So that means I'm going to be really loose, right? No. Sorry, fellas. I know you think you've knocked the bottom out and, you know, totally pounded it. Like it doesn't matter. Our vaginas are used to taking a pounding. They are made to stretch out enough to give birth to babies. So <laughs> yeah they're good they're they're used to getting roughed up and being able to bounce right back so unless you have multiple natural births vaginally that is the only time you should really have to worry about stretching and normally the doctor will sew you right back up to where you were before so sorry uh, fellas can't use the excuse throwing a hot dog down a hallway um 
that's just that's not how it goes it doesn't matter how much sex you have our vaginas are able to go right back to where they were now if you've noticed over time that it does feel like it's starting to loosen up work on them kegels girls work on the kegels start strengthening that pelvic floor and that will definitely help with that um now another thing is that people yes vaginas self-lubricate people say that yes and that is true vaginas do self-lubricate but they only self-lubricate throughout like the last two to three inches of the vaginal opening and most of our partners or toys are bigger than that so use a lubricant there are so many things that can make us not produce our own natural lubricant medications um, so if you're taking any kind of depression, anxiety medication, some birth controls, if you had a cold recently and it dries this up, it dries her up too. So partners, don't think, don't take it personal. If, if you're like, man, you're always so wet all the time and then now you're just not. Well, guess what? Something might just be going on. It's not you. It's not that we're not in the mood, but guess what? You should be losing, using lubricant every single time. And I'll say this in every single one of my videos, lube, 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 lubricant, use it every time. Whether you're by yourself or with a partner, always use lubricant to keep from tears. Um, so go ahead, girls. <laughs> Don't clamp them thighs together. Let them loose. You can have as much sex as you want, and it's not going to make you loose. So if that's what you're worried about, don't be. Um, the other thing that really drives me nuts, too, is that people tend to think that all uh, vulvas look the same, and they don't. So we have uh, labias, we have uh, labia minora and majora, which is the small lips and the bigger lips on the outside. And those are all different shapes, sizes, colors, um, textures, ridging, they're all freaking different. And guess what? They're all freaking sexy. So it does not matter if you tend to have bigger labias or smaller labias, or it doesn't even look like you have a second set of lips. That is okay. Everyone is going to look different and there's not a norm of how they're supposed to look. And so just get that out of your mind now. So if you, if you don't look like what you see in the porn, great. High five. You're not supposed to. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. So that is okay. Um, the other thing, so number nine, we're on nine now, is that squirting is peeing. Ha <laughs> ha, nope. But let me tell you, if you can get your female partner to squirt, like it is amazing. So it is not. The fluid that is released is actually coming from a skein's gland that presses up against the bladder. That's why most females feel like they have to urinate before they're getting ready to ejaculate. Um, and some people will call it a, a, an ejaculating orgasm. I do not because some women can actually squirt or ejaculate without orgasming. Um, just like the other way, some women can have an orgasm and not actually ejaculate. So, um, does it feel freaking phenomenal? Yes. But me, I'm one of those people where after I do that, after I ejaculate, I actually then have to keep clitoral stimulation to have a regular orgasm. So every female is different. So you have to get to know your partner's body and what she likes. Um, <laughs> oh, my next favorite topic is that all women come during sex. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Wah, wah, sorry, sorry partners. All women do not come during sex. In fact, most women do not. 80% of women require clitoral stimulation to be able to have an orgasm. Now, if you are one of those lucky, and I'm just gonna call it lucky bitches that are able to have an, an orgasm during sex, <laughs> high five, can I give you a hug? Because it doesn't happen often. They did a study recently that determined how close the clitoris is to the vaginal opening, actually determined how easy it was for a female to be able to have an orgasm just during intercourse with no hands or toy stimulation. Now, the closer it was, the easier it was to get that stimulation grinding up against your partner, usually on top. That's why most females, when they do have sex without using hands or toys, it is typically in that female on top position with her writing because she's able to grind and get that stimulation. The further away it is, I think they said two inches or further, you're going to have to use fingers. You're going to have to use a toy. And that's totally normal. So there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your partner. There's nothing wrong with the sex you guys are having. It's probably phenomenal. The only problem is most women can't come from just sex. They have to have that clitoral stimulation. Now, when we talk about that clitoral stimulation, a lot of people don't realize, and I've, again, talked about this before in one of my other videos, 
the clip is not just that little love button that's at the top. It actually looks like a wishbone and goes down into the labias, which are your lips. And that's why some women can't have direct stimulation. They need the lips to cover and with stimulation on top. Sometimes they need a toy to the side, sometimes straight on. There's so many different options because that little clip goes back a couple inches and then splits down the side. So there are so many nerve endings in that area that that's why we tell partners, don't just try to erase it. You have to figure out what your partner likes. Circular, V motion. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. So you just have to communicate with your partner on what they like. But so all women can not come during sex. That is a myth, a huge myth. Um, the other thing that I talk about is, um, so that was 10, this is 11. Yeast infections are normal. And I cannot repeat that enough that women think that because they have some type of infection that it's bad, that they're not keeping it clean. But there are so many different things that can affect that. Certain lotions, certain soaps, um, your laundry detergent, certain foods that you eat. Actually, if you eat more sugar, um, you're, you're gonna tend to get more yeast infections as well. Sugar um, tends to flare that up. So if you do have a lot of that, um, anything sweet, you're going to tend to have that issue as well. Now, number 12, as far as myths or um, uh, topics to cover, if you tend to get frequent um, yeast infections and you can't figure out what's going on and you don't eat a ton of sugar and, you know, you don't use, you don't douche, you don't, you know, you're really careful about everything you put in the nether regions, then you can look at using probiotics which is just a friendly bacteria that will actually help with stomach issues and yeast infections. Uh, you can get them at Walgreens. Normally they're behind the counter back with your pharmacist, but you don't need a prescription. Um, just let them know that you've been having issues and you'd like to try a probiotic for your um, nether region or vulva, whatever you're comfortable saying. Um, so there are some options for that. Now, <laughs> Something that a lot of people don't realize is that the vaginal discharge that we produce actually has enough acid in it to bleach fabric. So if you've ever noticed that your underwear, if they've been black or red or whatever the color they are, in that general area where we tend to discharge our fluids, you'll notice that it starts discoloring after, you know, and you think it's from the wash, like tossing them in to clean them. Nope, we have sassy little vaginas that like spit acid, <laughs> like, so don't worry. It's not gonna hurt your partner, I swear, I promise. But um, that is something really, really nifty. So technically we have like very, very powerful vaginas that can spit acid and change fabric. <laughs> so, but again, totally normal. Um, another thing that I can't stress enough, let, let her breathe at night, especially. Um, try not to wear underwear when you sleep. She needs air. She needs to breathe. So let her out, let her fan out air. Um, make sure you drink lots of water because drinking lots of water allows us to flush out, um, especially if you're worried about your taste or, um, how you smell it flushes out that bad scent and the bad taste out of our vaginal area. Um, so lots of water, wear cotton panties if you can. Um, if you tend to wear lace, silk, stuff like that, throws off the pH balance and typically makes us more susceptible to yeast infections. Um, the other thing is after sex always, and I have people ask me this all the time, do I have to pee when I'm done having sex? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You want to make sure that you're able to urinate after sex because that helps get all of the bacteria that's gone up through the urethra and helps keep you from getting a UTI. So lots of really important facts about our vulvas that we really, really need to know. So now let's get on to the guys. Now this was fun because I got to look up lots of different stuff um, on the like top 15 myths and tips about, just the tip, <laughs> about uh, male partners, uh, males in general. And so I got to look up stuff on the testicles, on backdoor stuff, on, yeah, is, yeah, I like, I like this whole thing. So when I look at my men, top 15 myths and uh, the truths about um, penises and their nether regions, <laughs> guys always say that size matters. They think so. This is really just something that guys have essentially. I don't know, deemed necessary. 
Um, now there all, there's always going to be exceptions to that rule. And yes, some women are like, oh yeah, the bigger, the better. Um, but for most women, it does not matter. It really doesn't. We care more about the motion of your ocean than the size of your boat. Most of us. So they actually did surveys and 90% of women preferred wider or thicker penises versus having them longer. So length does not always matter. But in those same statistics, 85% of women were more than happy with their partner and what they were packing. So they are satisfied. So unless you're just really stressed out about it and, oh my God, I gotta have a big penis because it's the only way it's gonna make you know my partner happy. No, I mean, if it is, get an extender, use a pump, or just give better foreplay. So many partners with a penis have this thing where they're like, oh my gosh, only a big dick can like take care of my partner and satisfy them. <laughs> Honestly, if you got us to squirt a couple of times and orgasm, we really wouldn't care. Actually, we'd be ready for a nap. So the sooner it's over with, the better we can, you know, get to our shows and chore lists and whatever else we need to do. So if you're really that worried about it, well, you better get better at using this and that because four plays where it's at then. Um, but so men, I know y'all are worried about it, but apparently your partners are not. Now, the other thing that I found interesting was so the average size is five to six inches. Well, that was a lot better. Five to six inches, which I believe is like this. Um, the other half of your penis is actually in your body. So please don't overestimate using those numbers. So even though you have five to six externally and you have five to six internally that actually attaches to the body, don't include that because we, yeah, that's like very deceiving. So stick with the number that you have, but I did find it interesting that the other half of the penis is actually on the inside of the body. So technically you could be packing, you know, 10 to 12. And, <laughs> but don't false advertise, that's not right. Um, now, for those of you speed racers who um, tend to think that you are a premature ejaculator, that is a really big issue for a lot of couples that I've talked to um, and a lot of men who are just super worried about the length of time that they're supposed to last during sex. Now, the problem is there's not really, there's not really a standard across the board. So 20 to 30% of men will suffer with premature ejaculation. Now, the problem is when you talk to these people, some people think 20 to 30 seconds is premature ejaculating. Others go 20 minutes and think that that is premature ejaculating. So every person's different as far as what they think. The median that most male partners with a penis will last before they ejaculate is 5.4 minutes, which wouldn't be a problem if you're able to take care of your partner first. But again, this is something that each couple has to talk about and to decide what to do. Now, if you are worried about going too quickly, there's lots of things you can do. With my other job, we offer, um, stuff that will desensitize and help you last longer that's called up all night otherwise you can use c rings any kind of cock ring that goes on the back of the penis that helps hold the blood in there that keeps you harder makes you last longer so c rings are a ton of fun plus you can get some that are vibrating that your partner can use um, to help them orgasm as well so that you both get something out of it. So there's some different ways to make you last longer as well. Um, <laughs> now, one of my favorite jokes was um, about, you know, the, what, what do you say about a guy that has big feet? Um, well, in this case, it's he wears big shoes or big socks because a guy with big feet has no correlation with how big his dick is, just so that you know. So the guy's walking around going, yeah, you see these feet? These feet are big. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care. It does not matter. There is no correlation with it. So, however, there is a correlation with height and the length from the palm to the index finger. There is a correlation with that. So screw your feet, show me your hands. I want to see them big hands. Um, so <laughs> if anybody's looking for a partner with a really big deck, you don't have to look at their feet, just look at their hands and how tall they are. Usually that is how it goes. Or then you have the others, which are like the medium to short guys who are like a tripod and they could like extend it. So honestly, you really just shouldn't judge because you really have no way of telling <laughs> whether they're big or small, unless you ask. Um, 
Now, something else that I like to talk about is morning wood. So people don't realize that guys will actually have three to five erections every night in their REM, like REM sleep. Um, and this happens every night and they don't know if it's to keep them from urinating because if a guy's ever tried to pee while he's got an erection, it's usually pretty hard to do. Um, so they think that that's something that sleep allows the body to do so that it doesn't like wet the bed. Um, the other thing that is really, really important to know is if you have a partner who's having issues getting erect when they're awake and you guys can't figure out what the issue is, if they're getting erections at night, then that means during the day it's probably a psychological issue that you guys are going to have to work through because clearly his body is able to produce an erection um, in his sleep. So if he's not having erections in his sleep, then you guys probably have an issue and should go talk to a doctor. Um, so a really cool way to find out where the issue lays if your partner um, is having issues getting an erection. Um, the other thing that people don't realize is that although the brain helps stimulate erections and having an orgasm um, or keeping them from having one or you know trying to, it's actually a spot in the back of the spine that controls when a male partner ejaculates. So although his imagination has some to do with, you know, um, like, oh, let's think about grandma and playing baseball. Well, that's gonna cut things off pretty quick. Um, so the brain does help stimulate that, but it's actually a spot in the back of the spine that controls when they ejaculate. So um, some, some men just can't help it. That's just what happens. So I, I thought that that was really, really interesting. Another thing that guys seem to think is this huge deal is the angle of the dangle. So some men go left, some go right, some aim up, some aim down. It does not matter. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen a penis that's like straight on. Um, some of them you have to like literally walk around the corner in your bedroom to hop on and ride. That's okay. There's different angles for every dangle and that is okay. That is totally normal. Um, now the other thing that I like to um, <laughs> address is that some people say, oh, I'm not a shower, I'm a grower, or I'm a grower, not a shower, or I'm a shower, you know, whatever. That's locker room talk. Technically, there is no correlation between whether or not someone is a grower or a shower. Um, it's not really a thing. It's just something that they came up with <laughs> to, I, don't, I guess, it, you know, don't look at it. He's not, you know, he's not putting on a show yet. Um, he has to grow and then you'll see him. But technically, there's small penises that are flaccid that stay small when they're hard. There's some that are big that stay big. And then, I mean, you just never know. So there's, it's not like it's one or the other. You have tons of in between. So that's really not something to go off of. Um, another thing um, that I really, really thought was interesting is that... Um, 37 to 39% of penises are circumcised. That's everywhere in the world, not just in the US. So I wanted to talk about circumcised and uncircumcised penises because I did have quite a few people asking about that. And I think it's a very interesting topic that most people don't address. And so there are some really bad stigmas that go with having an uncircumcised penis. And I wanted to address those. So they tend to think that having an um, uncircumcised penis is more dirty. Um, and there's so many things that go with that. So when a penis is not, so you have circumcision, which is where they cut the tip of the foreskin off and it then just allows it to stay back behind the head. When you have an uncircumcised penis, there is a, a group of skin that stays over it to keep it protected. Now, I know that a lot of parents are taught when, especially when kids are young or babies, that you're supposed to pull that foreskin back to clean it. No, you're actually not supposed to do that. It will essentially, just taking a bath and everything will be fine. You actually can hurt it and stretch the skin if you pull it back before it's time. Normally ages nine through like puberty is when you'll want to start pulling the head of you know, the skin back over the head because the skin is able to be pulled over at that point um, and it's not going to hurt. But really, as long as people are cleaning it properly, it's kind of like a, you know, a vulva and the lips that we have. We have lips that cover our vagina. And so after a full day of that, you'll probably want to wipe it before you get ready to have sex, you know, just kind of clean her up a little bit. It works the same way with uncircumcised penises. 
So pulling that back, it's really easy to just kind of clean over it. And as long as they have basic hygiene and, you know, <laughs> that's really all you need. It's not necessarily that they're dirtier. I think people get that idea because um, it can produce smegma and women can actually get this too um, because of the, the way that the vagina is and the lips over. We can get that smegma, which is dead skin cells and oil that combines to make this like white pasty stuff. And that a lot of times will get inside with you know the dead skin and the oil from the uncircumcised part so yes if they are not you know if they don't keep good hygiene then yes it can smell and taste disgusting um, but that's with females as well so you have to make sure that you're clean and just have proper hygiene and you're good um, so the other thing is that yes being uncircumcised does make the tip of the penis more sensitive because it's constantly covering it's always got it covered so when you pull that back it's now open to you know anything it's not used to being out in the open it's not like hello I'm out here all the time it's you know covered up <laughs> a little anteater it's covered up all the time it never comes out to say hello um, so you just have to be a little more careful because with it being sensitive some like the super sensitive and prefer to have that skin pulled back and then just kind of focus on the tip and others are like holy crap no no don't touch it like it tickles um it's really really sensitive for them so if you have a partner that's uncircumcised just um talk to them figure out what they like what they don't like um because it is a little bit different but for the most part it's still an up and down stroking motion still works the same way as a, as a circumcised penis so um, just different sensitivities is the biggest thing you have to worry about. Um, now, some other things that I thought was really um, interesting was that, so obviously with men, we can tell when they have an erection, they have that boner, um, but the testicles, the balls actually double in size as well. So there's a couple of things that we can look for um, that are noticeably different. And I think a lot of women maybe didn't realize that the balls get twice the size as well. So we get like a two for one show when stuff is getting bigger and coming out to play. So it's like a little show for us. Um, now, something that's really, really important to discuss is that, so age does not matter when producing sperm. So although with age, sperm levels decrease, they don't go away. So unless you have something like testicular cancer um, or snip snip, like, you're going to produce sperm and all it takes is one to get through. Um, so a lot of people think that age, I think I read an article, he was in India or something, he was 98 and was becoming a dad because <laughs> he's still producing sperm and it, it only takes one to get through there and that's it. So um, just because you're older doesn't mean that you're not going to have to worry about pregnancy issues if you're sleeping with a, a female partner, you can still have that no matter what age you are. Um, and just, okay, so something that I thought was really interesting. So like with boobs, one boob is always one bigger than the other. Um, so like my right one is like a whole size, cup size bigger than my left one. Um, so that is with most women, pretty much everyone. They're asymmetrical unless you buy them and they're, you know, perfectly done. You're typically going to have one bigger than the other. Well, guess what? Guys have that with their testicles too. So one is always bigger than the other one. And so what that does is that keeps them from damaging each other when they're sitting or when they're running. But also it helps them to keep cooler temperatures down there. Um, Cause heat, especially around the testicles is not a good thing. Especially if you're trying to get pregnant, keep, keep, keep the balls, keep them cool. Do not put laptops on them, no cell phones in the pockets, um, no hot tubs, showers only, try not to keep them too warm. Um, you wanna keep those boys cool, they gotta be cool. Um, so, um, the other thing is that people don't realize that testicular cancer is something that typically happens to men between the age of 20 and 34. So with most cancers, the older you get, the more likely you are to, you know, get, get cancer, um, have cancer. But with testicular cancer, it's age 20 to 34. So self-examine yourself, just like we tell women to self-examine your breast and feel around for lumps and stuff that feel different. Play with the balls, check them, do self-examinations, make sure that you're checking those as well. Um, especially for, especially like the guys that are on my pages, 
Um, they're all around that age. So make sure that you are checking, be safe. Now let's talk about some sex facts, some really, really fun sex facts. I've had so many people ask me about pregnancies. Oh my God, can I get it if I'm like standing up and letting the like, the sperm drip out? Can I have, can I get pregnant if I'm in a hot tub? Can I get pregnant if we use condom? Can I get pregnant if I'm on birth control? Can I, oh my God, I'm trying to think of all the different ones. Um, if I don't have an orgasm, but he does, does that mean that we, you know, can't have, we're not gonna get pregnant? Oh my God. If a penis, well, if a penis, <laughs> I was gonna do it a different way, but if a penis goes in a vagina, you have a chance of getting pregnant. Double wrapping it with a condom does nothing. Don't, don't double bag your condoms because that's actually gonna make it more likely to break because of the rubber on rubber. Um, so do not double up, that's actually bad. If you're using a condom, it doesn't matter. It can still break. You can still have some, some part of the semen come out. Um, if you're in a hot tub, does not matter does not matter. Yes, you can get pregnant from pre-cum. So even though, God, he's gonna kill me for saying this. When my brother, his motto used to be, don't be a dummy, come on her tummy. That doesn't work. Sorry. Just, <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm sorry. You can still get pregnant from pre-cum. You can still get pregnant if you're on your period. You can, um, you can still get pregnant when you're breastfeeding or even though you just had a baby, you still can get pregnant. That's why doctors give you so much of a timeline to wait after pregnancy, because it does not matter. A penis and a vagina can end up with a baby. Does not matter how it's wrapped or what pills you're taking or what, it doesn't matter, you can get pregnant. Um, yeah, positions don't matter or anything like that. So um, I did also have someone ask if they could double use a condom. Well, if I wash it out and rinse it and use it again, dear God, no, no, you can't. You cannot double use a condom. So I'm sorry. If you're with some chick for a one night stand and you only have one condom, you better make that one time work because one, you can't use that common condom again does not work. Um, and two, you can't go run and grab plastic wrap or something that looks like a condom. It, it's not, oh, gee, no, you can't. Nope, sorry, it doesn't work that way. So, um, I did have people ask, if you're having sex with your partner, then that means that masturbation stops. <laughs> nope, no it does not. So for single men, um, single men masturbated, um, there was a study that they did that once a week, 60% of men would masturbate, 40% of women would masturbate. When they were in a relationship, a monogamous relationship, that number went up from 60% to 85% of masturbating at least once a week with men that had um, male partners that had a relationship. For women, that number went up 5% to 45%. There is nothing wrong with masturbating, and I've said this before in my other videos, you should be having three to five orgasms a week. That's very, very important. And it also has health benefits. So masturbation is not a bad thing, even if you are in a relationship. Um, the other big misconception is that if you're in a relationship, sex should happen daily. No, I already did a study like this, and I've read multiple others. The standard is one to two a week, um, and that was on kind of the high end as well. Um, so sex doesn't happen daily. You start getting into a routine, it will start to slow down. You'll kind of get out of that honeymoon phase. The other thing that really frustrated me is people said that um, porn is terrible for couples. And some people are very, very against porn and I, I get it, I totally get it, but with all the studies that have been done, a small to medium amount actually increases the intimacy with the couple, um, it increases the frequency that you have sex, and it increases the quality of sex because you're getting new tips and tricks and you're gonna get sick of doing the same boring stuff over and over and over again because you're watching new ways to do it and fun ways to do it and well, we wanna be like them. Just keep in mind, pornography should only be for adults who understand that it's totally fake. So do not base your entire sex life off of what they do in the porn because you will be sadly, sadly disappointed. Um, just not, does not work the same way. Um, the other thing that I had people asking me about was that only gay men enjoy anal sex. 
<laughs> I know gay men that don't enjoy anal sex. So let me stop you right there because anal sex is not for everybody. Is it pleasurable? Oh, fuck yes. Yes, it is. For women, for men, I don't care if you're gay, straight, pan, trans, it does not matter. Anal sex is fun. Anal sex has a ton um, of nerve endings back there that make it amazing and increase your orgasms tremendously. Some people are just not into it, but do not think for a second that just because you like any kind of backdoor play that you must be gay if you're a male. No, that's not how it works. Um, so much more to it than that. It has more to do with the person you love and not just whether or not you like anal sex. Um, but it is a lot of fun. So it doesn't matter um, how you associate yourself. Um, try it by yourself, try it with a partner. Anal sex is fun, high five. Um, the last thing that I talk about tonight is, oh God, I have so many people ask me about this. How do I make my vagina taste good? Um, or for guys, how do I make my jizz taste good? Um, cause she, my partner complains what it tastes like. Well, let me, let me tell you, if you stick with a lot of meat and fish and, um, even certain veggies will do that. If you want something, if you want your, um, sperm, or your vagina, your vulva area to taste good. Remember that the foods that you eat three to 12 hours before will then determine what it tastes like. So try to plan your day food wise with what you're going to be doing that night. Um, anything fruit wise. So fruit, especially anything acidic for females, fantastic and actually makes you taste a little more sweet. Um, so try to stick with the fruits, pineapples, oranges, um, juices, anything like that that's real acidic is really, really good. Stay away from cigarettes, uh, alcohol, asparagus, onions, red meat, and fish. Those are your big no-nos, and that's what will make you taste bitter um, and not very good. So plan ahead. Um, make your partner want to lap you all up because you taste yummy. So those are all of my myths, tips, tricks, um, the dirty truth about vulvas, penises, and sex. I hope you guys learned a lot. I will be sending out another survey um, to find some more topics and ideas. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, I love you all. And thanks for watching Talk Sex with the Vixen.